What is going on, party people? Welcome to um, Making Money With Plus This, our webinar of the day. So here is the agenda, just so you guys know where we're going. Uh, introduction. I didn't bring my piano. Crap, I yeah, I'll get to that. Introductions. Um, I am Greg Jenkins from Monkey Pod Marketing. My business is helping Infusionsoft users learn how to make the most out of the platform. <laughs> most of you know that if you are here, but I know that Brian promoted this. I know that the, the fine folks over at Plus This promoted this. So it's entirely possible that this is the first time that we have interacted, in which case, hello. Um, my co-host today is my my good friend, the red beard himself, Mr. Brian Keith, who is best known for wearing kilts, sword fighting, and climbing mountains. The piece of our collective histories that matters to you guys is we are both Plus This users, and we are both experts in Plus This, and the goal of this webinar is to give you the blueprint to make the most out of that software. Here is the recipe um, for success with Plus This. Uh, it is strategy plus tool plus expertise equals results. And I will give you a, a, a little um, you know cheeky aside here. This is also the recipe for success with Infusionsoft or with Keep or with most tools, right? The reason that I feel um, this is important is because most people who buy plus this probably buy it to solve a problem. They probably need their platform, Entreport, Acta Campaign, Infusionsoft, et cetera, they need it to do something it doesn't do. And so they buy plus this, and then when it does that thing and it works, they get this, you know, this feeling of accomplishment, right? The problem with treating plus this like a solution is that it pigeonholes it into a specific part of your business or a specific application. And as Brian mentioned, there are well over 50 features in the plus this tool set. Most people buy plus this as a solution. And the problem with that is like, think about just recently, I built a planter box, right? And if I bought a tool like a, um, you know, a, a drill, let's say, to build that planter box, if I only thought that drill could work for the planter box, it's my planter box drill, I would be grossly underusing that drill. Now, my planter box would be fine, but the drill itself, I wouldn't be getting as much value out of it as if I treated that drill as a tool, a tool that could be applied to multiple solutions. So for you guys, you probably know this, but plus this is a tool. You might use it to create various solutions, but it's not for any one specific thing. It's a tool that is very versatile. And so I, I want you to take whatever blinders off uh, you may have and think about or be open to thinking about the other areas in your business that this um, might work. Uh, without any further ado, here is the format. Um, it will be, you know, Monkey Pod, that's me. And then Redbeard, that is Brian. And we will be sharing features that we uh, lean on or depend on. So with that being said, video tracking is the first feature. So um, here's what this feature does. When you host video on YouTube, on uh, Vimeo or on Wistia, right? When you host a video you have created somewhere, whether it's a free piece of content, a case study or a course, uh, that hosting platform gives you an embed code. When you, Brian, you want to queue up a poll to see if people are already using this specific feature. On um, when you take that embed code, you could pop it directly onto your website or onto your membership area and people will be able to watch that video, right? But what plus this video tracking does is it allows you to take that embed code and put it into plus this and it gives you a different embed code. The, the reason that works is because plus this wraps the existing embed with their own code that gives you extra functionality and extra reporting. And so now when people watch that video, their experience is exactly the same. The difference is you can define key intervals in that video and you can apply tags or take action when certain things happen. So if somebody starts the video and they watch at least 30 seconds of it, you can raise tag number one. If they watch five minutes of it, you can raise tag number two. If they watch uh, you know, 10 minutes of it, you can raise tag number three. So I use this feature in a variety of ways. Here is sort of the, the back end. Here's how that feature looks. Uh, looks like we have a few people who are using this, um, a few people who are not using this, and then some who have used it in the past, but maybe have gotten away from it, okay? So uh, one example is earlier this year, I published a case study on the African Leadership University, and it's about a 30-minute case study. It's actually 32 minutes. And so what I did was I set up a plus this feature to track, did they watch at least two minutes of it? 
that's sort of the, the early benchmark that tells me they have engaged with it. They've started watching it. And then I set up a second tracking tag. Did they watch at least 30 minutes of it? And then I built a corresponding campaign in Infusionsoft, right? So you could do this in Entreport or an active campaign, but um, you could see if somebody requests access to it in the top left of this uh, campaign, um, the access is unlocked. And then there's reminders for them about the access that are stopped if they start watching it. So what I'm doing is I'm giving people access to the case study and then I'm nudging them until I know that they have actually watched at least two minutes of it and then the nudges stop. Now that same tag that concludes the first, the top section of this campaign also starts the bottom section. And so what I'm looking for there is if they start the video and make it at least two minutes, do they finish it? Because it's 30 minutes long. So it's there's a high probability that some people will get distracted or, or you know, uh, the ice cream man will drive by or their kids will walk in and pull them out of the room or what have you. And so what I have is a little delay in there. And then if an hour goes by and they haven't finished it, remember the video is only 32 minutes long. So if an hour goes by, it means something got in the way. I have another nudge that says, hey, don't worry, I saved your spot and a link back to the video. So I use this with my AOU case study. I also use it throughout my various courses. If you don't know MonkeyPod, my whole business is virtual education. My courses are self-paced. So I use this strategy to help encourage people to consume all of the content. It's this crazy concept, but what I have learned is that my videos only work if people watch them. And so what I'm doing is making it easy for them to get back to the content that I know will help get them what they need. Now, you this happens to be a customer facing strategy. This happens to be customer facing that they get a nudge or a reminder, but it doesn't have to be. You could also set this up simply for internal reporting. And I do that as well. I actually use um, tags at three key intervals in my IS starter kit course and in the keep starter kit course um, so that we get, can gauge how, how much, who started this video, who watched at least 50% and who watched at least 75%, right? And that gives me the ability to break down on a video by video level what they're consuming, right? And what this tells you as a course creator or as a content creator is what content of yours is working or what content are people not you know, following through on. And one lesson that I learned from using video tracking for reporting is that my videos were too long. When I rebuilt the CB trilogy this year, I made a, a, um, a very explicit effort to get every video under 15 minutes because previously they had been 20 plus and I noticed that a lot of people weren't making it to my final benchmark. And it's and, you know as I had conversations with people, I learned it was because the content was just too long. Um, Lisa, uh, I don't believe this has any impact on the speed of the website. Um, I believe it runs in tandem to the video player you're already using. So um, if you, uh, Alan said this is being recorded, it is being recorded, Alan, uh, as long as there are no issues with the recording, I'll get that out to everyone. So if you need to leave, um, I, 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 I pity you, but uh, I understand. Um, yeah, so no impact on the speed of the site. Uh, the video player is still gonna be Wistia or Vimeo or YouTube or whatever you use. Um, this little bit of plus this code uh, just acts as sort of a wrapper that goes around the video so that when they hit those milestones, it communicates back to your uh, CRM and can raise tags or start or stop automation. So uh, that is the video uh, triggers feature. Uh, it is my favorite plus, well, it's top two. It's either my favorite or second favorite plus this feature. Um, but if you do any sort of video content, I would recommend leveraging this feature. Um, big, big fan. Uh, Ashley said she's gonna use this one. Rick and Emmett gave me two thumbs up. Uh, they each gave me one, but I'm gonna co combine those together. I'm gonna count it as a double thumbs up. All right, Brian, uh, this is me ping-ponging, passing the baton to you for time between events. Take it away. So time between time events. Time between events, what does it do? Short version, things happen in your business like someone signing up to uh, join your app like Infusionsoft in general, or someone buying something or someone downloading something. And the time between two things happening is awfully interesting. And if we knew something like, well, how long has it been since you last bought something, you being a contact in your database? I wanna see everybody who's bought something from me within the last 30 days. That thing up there where it says event one, there's a whole bunch of options there. And the date the content was created is one of them. 
Now, the date a tag was applied, this could be like in Greg's case, blog subscriber. Greg has the best, tied with the best nurture campaign I have ever seen. Tied with only wait, one, wait, one wait. other person. Brian, can you see that piece about event one and how there's a bunch of options up there? Yeah, yeah. Let me go make sure I get the right list. No, no, just say it. Just, just say it out say loud. It. Say it out loud. So under event one, you have five or six options, including uh, the date a content was created, the date a tag was applied, Look, the date of the last order. Almost like we planned it. <laughs> Were you going to let me get it all the way through to see which ones I missed? Okay. Oh, no. First purchase. Okay. I was, I was doing okay. I was doing okay. The current date went triggered. That's important. Uh, and then a specific date. So these are both in event one and event two. <clears throat> They're both all there. So you can imagine you could combine the date found in a particular field, like since January 1st of this year, and the date a tag was applied, like when did they take me up on my New Year's promotion? That it was somewhere between minutes, hours, days. I know maybe it didn't do minutes, but hours, days, weeks, months. So you can do all kinds of calculations here. Plus it also has a math feature, which you can play with. But here's how we can identify who is the most relevant, exciting people or who is most likely to no longer be engaged. Like if you look at your customer list, you say, okay, 100 customers, I wanna find the 10 who it's been the longest since they bought, bam, plus this. You say the date found or the date, uh, the current date when triggered and the date of the latest purchase. And then you store that in a, in a custom field and the bigger that number is, the more likely that person is to never buy from you again. You find the 10 people with the biggest number, you call them. So plus this has now told you who should you activate. On the other hand, who are the 10 people who have most recently purchased? The same thing, you can do that. You can look at the bottom 10. That's just one way to combine this, the two metrics in this feature. Uh, but like the example that Greg had here with a blog subscriber, really interesting to know who is taking quick action from when they first come around your environment to actually taking a conversion action. Like in my case, I wanna know how long between when you got in my system and you signed up to get my weekly tips on plus this via SMS. If that time is zero, that means you came from plus this webinar or something like that. If that time is, a hundred days. Well, okay. So you were not, you didn't come into my audience as a plus this person, or you weren't really excited about it. This can help me focus my attention on the people who are the best opportunity to talk to about any particular thing. I'm going to look at the chat bar because you people are saying cool stuff. Yeah. Can I, can I share? Um, yeah. So the way I think about this, right, is your customers have a journey, right? And you probably know what the big milestones are in their journey. Right. It's the time that they met you. It's the time that they became a subscriber. It's the time that they scheduled the demo. It's the time that they bought. It's the time that they became a member or whatever those key junctures are. Right. So what this feature allows you to do is figure out from the time that you met them to the first milestone. How long was that? The first milestone to the second, to the third, to the fourth. Like so you're, you're measuring like, is there a gap that is longer than it should be? And that's where you spend your time or energy. Or are the milestones even happening in the order that you think that they are, right? And if you don't know, then the easiest way to start is with the date that that person enters your CRM and then whatever the milestones are. And if you set up a few of those features, you're going to get some data that tells you, wow, people are becoming a blog subscriber after they buy. And maybe that just means you produce content differently or you have to target content to get people uh, you know, earlier in their journey, right? So this feature should give you some insights into the, the path people are taking and the rate at which things are happening. Common thing, you sell a small price thing and then later you sell a big price thing. How long between when those two purchases happen? How long between they first enter your system and they buy the low price thing? And, and again, what are these happening in? Now you see it has first purchase, second purchase, et cetera. But if you're tagging your purchases when they occur, you can use the date a tag was applied. And then you can discover, are they actually buying the big thing first and the small thing second? That would be confusing, but if that's how you can figure that out by running this tool and saying, how many days between date they first were created and the small purchase date created and big purchase, and then do the math in there and say, well, this is 12, this is 30, whatever else. Um, Bingo. So qu question here. Um, oh, you. Excuse me, <clears throat> Greg already did it. Are you using calculate date between? Wow, that's that's some line reading right there, folks. I wanna see who's using this. Uh, it is so interesting. And note, you can both have this be part of ongoing systems where you're tracking or doing things on a regular basis, but you can also do this for one-time reporting where you might go set this up to do yes. a report and then get a bunch of data into your Infusionsoft app. You can then use a fancy tool called the Google Sheets Updater and put that into Google Sheets and then do all kinds of analysis. 
part of why people think I'm smart is because I'm able to use the Plusys Google Sheets updater to extract data out that Plusys has helped put there and then draw conclusions, which is really easy in a spreadsheet and not always really easy in native Infusionsoft. So that's my superpower. Not yet, oh my God, 24 people. That is so Bro, exciting. Web webinar over, there you guys go. <laughs> Just 20, 24 go people? This. Yeah. This is so cool. So yeah. let's give you a very simple thing. Here's the very simplest thing in the world. I want everyone after this webinar, not right now, uh, I want you to look at uh, the date the content was created as event one and the date of the first purchase as event two. Run this, then look at the data and you'll have a custom field that says, that, that this spits out where this data goes. Look at just that, content created, first purchase. Ignore everything else we said until you've done that. Look at your data and you go, oh, this was actually pretty useful. And then, okay. I'm going to stop talking. I'm really excited. 24. People. That's all right. 29 yeah. people. It's 29. This is amazing. Are we ready to move on? No, but go for it. I'm never ready to move on. Just <laughs> okay, Brian, you you going on you, mute. Roll, you roll around in that and 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 bask in the the glory of sharing a feature that 30 people have yet to discover while I transition into uh, perhaps my this is the the other contender for my favorite plus this feature. So, the first one I talked about was video triggers. Uh, this one is modern forms. Um, and uh, I'm imagining that Brian is queuing up a poll to figure out whether or not you guys are using modern forms. But the way this one works is really simple. So Infusionsoft has web forms, right? Um, they are lackluster. And uh, that's the, the polite, the diplomatic way of putting it. Modern forms is a plus this feature that allows you to take a normal Infusionsoft web form and make it look good. It fits into your website seamlessly. It is mobile responsive. It's just a, a cleaner, sexier way of Infusionsoft web forms. So check this out. Um, you choose which form in Infusionsoft you want to access. Um, and then you they have a list of pre-built styles. Uh, there's like 25 of them. Um, there's some additional style options, like if you want to hide the labels or if you want to um, you know, add you know, a different color to the button or change the text or whatever. Um, and then it gives you a different embed code and you pop it into your website and it just looks clean, right? That's a normal Infusionsoft web form um, embedded on a page. That's actually the, the partner sign up page for our Keep Starter Kit course. Um, and here's another one on the ALU uh, case study. Uh, it's just really clean, guys. Modern Forms is a simple, simple tool uh, that if you use, if you already have plus this, this should be in your arsenal. You should be using modern forms everywhere. And I'll give you a pro tip. Um, Infusionsoft landing pages don't track um, lead source or affiliate code, right? They're, they're just not as tightly connected as I would like them to be. So what I have started doing is taking an Infusionsoft web form, wrapping it in modern forms code and putting it on an Infusionsoft landing page and it gives me a landing page that's totally native that works with affiliate tracking and lead source tracking because of this modern forms feature. So if you are a Infusionsoft user and you use affiliate tracking and that has been a frustration for you, um, then this is the solution. Modern forms is a, uh, is a clean way of embedding Infusionsoft forms anywhere. So Pierre asked me to repeat that, okay? So if you use Infusionsoft landing pages, the Infusionsoft landing page builder, natively, they don't track lead source and they don't track, they don't respect affiliate tracking. So that means if you have like affiliates promoting your stuff, you can't send them to an Infusionsoft landing page because the cookie uh, doesn't get tracked and that re referral partner relationship isn't added. I hope Infusionsoft will fix that. It's on their radar. I've been talking to them about it. I hope that they'll fix that sooner than later. But in the meantime, you can take an Infusionsoft web form, set it up with modern forms, and then embed that onto an Infusionsoft landing page or any page. And because it's a web form, it'll track lead source and respect affiliate tracking. Yeah, Yarek said that sucks. Uh, it's just, it's silly that they haven't fixed it, but this is a solution, yeah. Um, and then check this out, Brian, this might be a surprise to you as well. Um, I recently gave some feedback to Plus This. I said, you know, it would be great if these forms, if they could, if they gave us a popover version, a light box version, so it just would be a button. And I talked to Todd Stoker at Plus This, big shout out to him. And he said, yeah, I could see why that might be valuable. And so he built it. And so now that is an option with modern forms. This is a modern forms button. And when you click it, 
it creates a popover with an Infusionsoft web form. So this three months ago or two months ago wasn't available, but because Plus This is a small and nimble company, when you give them feedback, if it is something that's gonna serve a lot of people, I have found them to be really responsive and I am just thrilled to take a, a, a smidgling of, of credit for the introduction of this feature. So um, if you already were impressed, impressed by Modern Forms, the ability to easily do uh, a popover might give you the, the, um, the, I guess, permission to stop paying for another tool, right? If this functionality replaces something that you were using elsewhere or paying or, or subscribing to elsewhere, uh, then ideally we'd love to, to streamline the tools that you're re relying on. So Brian, we are ping-ponging back to you for smart links. Tell us about it. Smart links, in short, we want to be able to send people to different places depending on their behavior whether they live in the US or live in Canada or whether they have a beard or not, if you're tracking that, whether they're customers or not, whether they have expressed an interest in something or not. Specific use case, let's say you fill out my contact form. Uh, if I've already tagged you as a plus this lead in Infusionsoft, I can send you to a different thank you page depending on whether you are a plus this lead or not. And if you are not a plus this lead, then maybe my video saying, hey, I'll get in touch with you shortly says one thing. If you're a plus this lead, then I'll put you, I'll take go somewhere else. Second use case, you can send an email to people and the email, uh, the link you have in there can go to a different place. So let's say Greg had a plus this tag in his Infusionsoft account. He's emailing a bazillion people about this. And then if you, if he does not already know you are plus this user, that email, uh, the link there might go to a video saying, hey, register. And it says, by the way, here's what plus this is. Here's what it can do for you. But if he, if he already knows you're a plus this user. He doesn't need to say, this is all plus this is. He can say, you're already using plus this. I'm gonna show you how to use it better and make more money. This particular tool, uh, A, is the most popular tool in all of plus this over time. It is so popular that is the literal first thing in my book uh, because it is so darn popular. Uh, I know that Greg has his most favorite tools, plural, but this one is the best thing ever. Now let's talk about how to use it. You see here on the screen, priority one, and there's a new smart link path and rule. You can have more than one setting, but you also have this fallback URL down here at the bottom. So what we can see here in this example Greg has is the top one says, if you are an OG member, which is his membership group, that's the best place to find me on Facebook is in the monkey pod grove. Then if you click this link, whatever link led to this smart link, and you are part of the OG, then you go to a page saying CBTY is OG. So thank you for whatever it is then this person is an OG. So then Greg can, Greg can say, so Brian, mid gesture, go for it, make it good. Yeah, yeah, well, th I just wanted to give you context. This particular smart link is for a thank you page on an order form. So yeah. I show them, right, if they're already a uh, OG member, I show them one thank you page. And if they're not an OG member, I show them a different thank you page. And the right. reason for that is, is our next feature that's called foreshadowing people. So, but we have the fallback URL here on the bottom. So you can see in this case, it's binary. Either you're part of the OG, so you should go here, or you're not, so you should go here. But you can have multiple of these. And you see underneath rule based on tags, it says has tags, but it can also be other things like field status, uh, have they opted in or not, all kinds of stuff. So we can use this to really carefully segment people so that they see the right thing. So if you buy this thing, the first version, if you're part of the OG is Greg saying, I knew members of the OG like you would buy this because you're so smart. The second one might say, you bought this thing, you're the coolest person ever. Now, have you considered joining the OG? So very easy to have personalized communication. If that makes sense, oh yeah, 15 people are not using this, wow. If it makes sense how you use this in this use case, type a yes in the chat box. So let me, so let's make sure that I explained that sufficiently. Yes in the chat box if why you'd wanna send people if they had or had not bought a second thing in one direction or another. Okay, people are saying yes, okay. That's a, that's a softball, people, that's a softball. Foreshadowing time. Wait, softball, should I like baseball or should I like throw it pitching? I don't even know. Pitching it back to Greg through the camera. That's how okay. that works. So the feature that he just talked about, smart links, um, I use it coupled with upsells, right? So I have five Infusionsoft courses, and if you buy one of my courses, the thank you page says, hey, great, um, here's that course, you've got access but you might want a place to ask questions about this material. If you do, you should join the OG membership. 
but it doesn't make sense for me to make that offer to people who are already OG members. So what I've done is after a purchase, I use a smart link to direct people to one of two pages, either a page that says, hey, thanks for buying the course, you're already an OG member, ask all your questions in the Grove, or a page that says, hey, thanks for buying that course, you're not yet an OG member, so that might be you know, something that works well in conjunction with your purchase. Um, here's the way that the upsells work. On that page, uh, you can select what you want to add to that purchase. So I'm adding a subscription there, uh, override subscriptions that you could adjust the price or add free trial days or, or adjust the billing cadence. So if you have the subscription that you sell normally one way, but you wanna sell it differently for the upsell, you can. Um, you can have that offer expire. So I don't have it expire, but you could say, you know, in the next two minutes, if you make a decision, you can get this at, you know, a supreme discount or whatever. Um, and then you also, I like this feature a lot. Um, you have the ability to add it to the existing order. So what plus this does is it suspends the order that's created for that initial purchase while they're making the decision or maybe it just modifies it after it's been created and adds it to it. But either way, it doesn't create separate order records. Um, I wrote a blog post a long time ago about how to do native one-click upsells in Infusionsoft using action sets. And the drawback to that was that action sets don't process right away and it creates a separate order. So if somebody clicks yes, it could be up to four hours before they get charged for that thing and it would be separate orders. Plus this solves all of that. It creates one order, adds the item to it, um, and it gives you some additional options like the ability to add urgency if you wanted to expire it. Um, after the upsell has been redeemed successfully, this is the page that they are sent to. Uh, this is the tag that gets applied. If the uh, upsell fails or errors, here's you know where they go, where it goes, and here's the tag that gets applied. And if the if they decline it, right, you could add an option for no thanks. Here's the page that they see, and here's the tag that gets applied. So these are just the settings for that particular feature. So if you're going to use upsells, one thing to think about is what if they say yes, what if they say no, and what if there's an issue? And those are the three scenarios that are accounted for there. Um, here's what it looks like. Um, I just took a screenshot of the particular section of the page because the buttons are really clean. You can control the text that's on there. You can add them to different areas on the page. And then here's you know my personal results. I haven't been using it all that long, um, but you can see, what is that? Like 33% take rate. Um, about a third of people who see this upsell become OG members. And you may have a similar scenario in your business where you could be capitalizing on a purchase opportunity to increase that average transaction price to get more people into your membership if you simply offered it. And Infusionsoft doesn't have an easy way to add that um, in the post-purchase process. And so Plus This does. And this is, you know, when we talk about making money from Plus This, um, this is, this is your any new money you make is going to come from one of three places, right? New customers, existing customers, or increasing transaction value. And this one is that third category. Uh, it's not necessarily going to create new customers, but it will help you with capitalizing on um, that initial transaction or any transaction with your, your current audience. So um, yeah, this is a no brainer. I feel like if you have two things that people often buy in rapid succession, maybe give them a, a way to buy them together. And some people will, not everyone will, but some people will. So um, it looks like, yeah, uh, most people are still not using this. And guys, I don't blame you. I had plus this for I don't know, two years, maybe three years before I before I started using this feature. And as you can see, a third of people are taking the, the offer there. And so there's probably even more ways uh, to be that I could be leveraging this, but it's, you know, start somewhere, right? Don't don't worry about like implementing it everywhere. Get a first version in place and you might be surprised with like how easily you can move the needle. Okay, Brian, back to you for email engagement triggers. Tell me about it. Confession time, folks. I don't have the very best email nurture campaign stuff set up ever. And so I find myself looking at people who have maybe not engaged recently in an email. And part of how I do this is the plus this email engagement triggers, where it runs through my Infusionsoft account on a regular basis and then goes and tags people 
based on a bunch of criteria. And it says things like who is engaged within the last 30 days, who is not engaged for 30 days, but has engaged within 60 days, and so on and so forth, who's never been emailed. And I use this to figure out who am I at risk of losing being able to email to. And you can both have there, plus this basic defined buckets like who is not engaged in 90 days or longer. You can also have more specific buckets you can have user defined. And it is super useful for identifying who are you about to lose. If you have people who have not engaged in over 90 days, then they are walking their way towards oblivion where you'll no longer be able to email them. Or if you do, you'll start hitting spam traps and tank your email reputation. So if email deliverability matters to you, then you should turn on email engagement triggers and give yourself a better sense of what is actually happening in your account. Uh, Hammer wants to know why this feature is better than the native Infusionsoft Ungate. <clears throat> yeah, option. yeah, it's uh, you can set up some of the stuff uh, with the Infusionsoft native unengaged, uh, but in the what Infusionsoft has is their unengaged marketable is people who have not engaged. I think over four months. I think, uh, but plus this gives you a bit more granularity. I just have a report on my Infusionsoft dashboard that said that gives me all the basic settings that plus this has, and it makes it super simple to see, okay, and then because you can click on the number, it just lets you go straight to saying, okay, well, people who have not engaged between 30 and 60 days, I'm gonna go look at that. And then if I want to say, okay, well, I have this many people in that bucket, I'll go click just the link that brings up the contact list, right? Edit criteria columns, choose people who have the plus this list tag, and then write up something about plus this and send it. Like, okay, now I've emailed those people that that's something important to them. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm thinking. Right? Makes sense to me. Um, back to me. Yeah. Okay. So the next uh, feature number seven here is Facebook audience triggers. So this one is for anyone who is uh, running any sort of advertising on Facebook, right? So you are probably familiar with custom audiences. Um, that's when you like upload a spreadsheet of your uh, your your hot leads to Facebook or your webinar attendees to Facebook, and then you can target that custom audience. Oh, I forgot to do a poll for yours. Sorry about that, Brian. Um, yeah, and then you can run promotions to them or you can use it as a suppression group and remove them from certain promotions, et cetera. Uh, well, plus this has a feature where you can dynamically add people to or remove people from specific audiences uh, in your Facebook ads account. So here's what that feature looks like in Plus This. Uh, you can see which feature or which Facebook ad account am I working with, Monkey Pod ad account, and which audience am I adding people to, the nurture audience. So what this means is Brian has mentioned uh, quite um, complimentary my, my uh, nurture campaign, which he is a, a participant in and advocate for. Um, and so when people enter my nurture campaign, I use plus this audience triggers to automatically add those people to a, um, a, a custom audience on Facebook so that while you're receiving nurture communication from me, I'm also running different various promotions to that nurture segment. The reason I feel like this is really important is because as powerful as email is, it's only one communication channel. And so what this gives you the ability to do is create audiences that mirror the different stages of your customer journey and run ads to people based on where you know they are at in your automation. So think about this, right? If you uh, are added to my nurture campaign, you're also added to my nurture audience. So as I, as the communication in the nurture campaign starts, you know, building, uh, I can run ads that support and reinforce the messages or the call to action that uh, for what I want you to do next. Um, and then, so that's what that looks like. It's done via an HTTP post. So at the start of this campaign, um, the first thing that happens is people are added to that uh, custom audience. And then this is where things get a little ninja. If you become a MonkeyPod customer, if you buy something, uh, I have another audience trigger set up that automatically removes you from the nurture audience and um, adds you to the MonkeyPod customers audience. The reason I created a Monkey Pod customers audience is not because I run a whole bunch of ads to it. It's because I exclude that audience when I run ads that are specific for products. 
So if I know that you've already bought the thing that I'm running a promotion for, I can make sure that it doesn't show for you, right? Which not only creates a better user and more targeted experience for my customers, it also allows me to spend my marketing ad budget more um, intelligently. And then uh, the beauty of removing people from audiences dynamically is, uh, is just what it sounds like, is you can keep an ad running and contacts will automatically be added to or removed from it so that you know that that ad can run uh, ongoing and the audience will be dynamic because it's constantly evolving. Uh, Brian, anything you want to add on that? Oh, webinar, but I didn't have my latest list of plus this people have requested the book, text message series in Facebook ads because I just didn't do it. Like well, that's that's pretty dumb. So I spent about five minutes automating it. So now if you go and you get the PDF version of this book, you will be automatically added to the Facebook groups, so you see the ad for this webinar. Obviously, it took like five minutes to do. Why didn't I do it last year? I don't know, didn't get around to it. But now it's set up. So now forever in the future, if I ever wanna advertise anything plus this, Facebook already has it there. It's already updated. Too, too easy. All right, Mr. Brian Keith, let's talk about split <coughs> testing. Let's do it, split testing. Basic concept is, what kind of beard is best? Like an orange one or more of a, like a brown, black, whatever gray guy's going on, like however you define that. Yeah. Uh, or, or what's best, you know, Greg's dog, Acme, or my cat, Gus Gus. I, it's it's really this or that. So what- uh, His name is Gatsby, and I'm embarrassed that you missed that. Well, how did I say, what did I say? It, uh, it sounded like Acme, but, but oh, maybe- sorry, it was I was thinking about cats. I'm so sorry. Of course, Gats, Gatsby's a hero, by the way. That's, That's the right. most important reason to follow Greg's content is you get to see Gatsby being a superhero traveling through the mist. So uh, split testing. Uh, what's okay. going to work better? Is it going to work better to offer the OG membership uh, on an order form as a little bump? Say, hey, want to add this on? Or is a one-click upsell? I don't know. Neither do you until you test it out. And plus, this allows you to test that out in a couple ways. This split test emails one right here can test out a bunch of different stuff. So it actually says you can use this sequence and you can test it compared to this sequence, even if the first part of a campaign and the last part of a campaign is the same. So I might want to say, uh, okay, I have a book, I have a plus this book. What works better? Should I pitch you on hiring me to go do plus this stuff immediately after you download the book and then later on do plus this nurture stuff? Or should I have a couple months of nurture emails and then pitch you on selling the book? Split test emails allows me to send people evenly or not evenly into each track to go discover. And it also does all the tracking inside plus this. And it also you can see at the bottom here, when should the test stop? So I can say, well, once I get 10 people buying in, then I want, then I'm just gonna stop the test and plus this will automatically send people to the right one. So I can set this up and then forget that I've done it. And I'll continue to make more money because plus this, plus this will know, tell me, but also keep doing it even if I forget about it, that it's actually more effective to nurture people first and then pitch them instead of pitching them and then nurturing them. Uh, I wasn't listening to any of that. Uh, I went. I went. I back. was offended about you. were offended about me mis, mis naming your dog, which is I understandable. I'm so uh, sorry. Gatsby, Gatsby, by the way, is posted up there in front of a space heater. He's giving me the butt. He's just ignoring me. Look at that. Oh, Naughty Eddie tip. Oh, Eddie tip. I'm so sorry, buddy. Oh almost, man. Almost as if I'm cute. I'm yeah, that's crushed. right. Okay, um, no, what I was actually doing is getting the names ready for the contest. So I went back up and I was finding oh. the people who shared it earlier. Oh, so, wait, hey, it's all um, on the hour, that's wild. Time yeah, flies we're almost there, time, folks. But we're, we're in the home stretch and we're doing great. Uh, so first of all, Brian, you're doing great. I'm proud of you uh, with the exception of that weird uh, Acme Gatsby mix up, you're killing it. Um, but to the attendees, um, this the questions have been awesome. You're you're um, you're helping fill in the gaps for anything we miss. So please keep it coming. Um, page triggers, feature number nine. Um, so remember earlier I talked about video triggers. If people are watching a video and they hit certain benchmarks, you can raise uh, tags. They, remember that, Brian? Yes, Greg. We remember. Cool. Perfect. Thanks, guys. I was typing a poll because I do polls. Oh uh, yeah, man. I'm busy. I'm I'm running. I'm running. I'm giving away t-shirts. People yeah. tag, whatever. Okay, so uh, just the way video triggers allows you to raise tags when people hit different benchmarks in a video, uh, page triggers allows you to raise tags when people spend a certain amount of time on a page. So uh, like this is inside my membership area. 
um, where I recently launched and I haven't really promoted it yet, but if you uh, have access to any of my free stuff or you're in the membership area or access to any of my courses, uh, you can look for my Marketing Automation 101 course. It is the foundation before your foundation. This is like as basic as it gets because I know some people feel like they missed that day in class. So I'm happy to steer you toward that question if you, uh, or to that, that course if you're interested. But here's the point. Um, there's a number of videos on there and people might watch them out of order. But I wanted to know when people start that course. So what I did was I set up a feature that applies this tag when people have spent 45 seconds on that page. So if they've spent you know 45 seconds, I assume they've started watching something. Uh, it doesn't matter which video they're watching. This way, I know they've begun that course and then I can follow up with them and send them more information. And then there's a tag once they check all the boxes on that page. Um, there's a t from That's not a plus this feature, that's an access ally feature but it tells me that they've completed that course. So if they start it, it begins with this tag. If they complete that course, it uh, gets another tag. And if they get stuck in between, it tells me those people need some encouragement to go finish that course. So page triggers is a great way to follow up with people based on where they have been. Now I use it to drive engagement for this particular course, but you could also use it um, you know, for people who, who visit a sales page or people who visit um, some, you know, uh, aspect in your membership area. Uh, there's just a bunch of ways, depending on what the page is, you might want to use that information differently. Um, Rob, I don't know if I taught that in the class. Pre-cart abandonment, folks, magic. Uh, yeah. Uh, so some people might be wondering, why is this different than the web page automation goal in Infusionsoft? The primary difference is that you can delay it until after a certain amount of time. So the web page automation goal in Infusionsoft fires as soon as that page loads, which is important. But there are certain times where you don't, you want to know if they've been there for a while. You want to know if they're looking, if they're on your sales page for five minutes, maybe you want their phone to ring with a sales rep calling them, right? There's just other reasons why you might want to uh, use this page trigger to delay when the automation uh, takes place. There we go. There we go. Feature number 10. Um, and I saw Andre had to go, uh, yeah, and he said, tell me if I won the swag. Guys, I'll say it now. I think I said at the beginning, you're going to have to be present to win the contest uh, for the t-shirt. So if you need to run, uh, you are you are increasing the odds for those people who can stick around. Um, and I promise right after this feature, so I know it's 11.02, but right after this feature, we will get that t-shirt given away. Mr. Brian Keith, how do you use SMS? Well... We all know that this right here, people carry on them all the time. And so instead of emailing people to have your emails die in their inbox, why don't you just text them? I built this once on a plus this office hours where I said, would you like to hear from me each week with a quick tip on how to better use plus this? And people said, yes. And then I had to build it. Whoops. So I built it. And now if you text a certain phone number to, or if you, if you text in the word plus this to a certain phone number, then every week for the next 10 weeks, you get a plus this tip. It cost me something like three quarters of a no, third of a cent per text. It's very, very small. If you get 10,000 people using it, it starts to cost real money, but it's super duper simple. It's easy to set up an Infusionsoft. Uh, plus this uses Twilio. So it works in most countries in the world. Uh, yep. And they can get you the details on exactly where it might not work, but it, it runs all the way from on a webinar. If we had this set up for this, we could say, hey, text in Greg to this phone number to go get a free thing. It can handle that through plus this. But also you can have things like I have with a plus this weekly tips where I could go, hey, get another 20 people to go sign up and hear from me every week for 10 weeks. I don't do anything. And it both does. You can do that broadcast, but also it's listening. So if someone replies something that I don't have a rule for, it can yeah. go put that in front of me. So I can see, oh, someone said something like they asked me an actual question across text. I can put that in my system so I can go answer it and make sure that I'm not ignoring yeah. anybody. Yeah. 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 Um... I mean, SM, like, so I mentioned when we were talking about Facebook uh, ads, I mentioned that like email is just one channel. Well, at, you know, SMS is another channel and Facebook ads is another channel. And if you adopt a multi-channel strategy, um, you know, the same message spread across multiple channels has a better chance of being received. Sometimes, sometimes people, you know, need to hear the same thing more than once in order for it to stick or... Sometimes they're not looking in their inbox because it's the holidays, but they do check their text message or they're not um, you know, necessarily 
their, their defenses are up, but then they see an ad that reinforces the same thing, right? If you spread it across these different platforms, um, you've got just a better chance of, of your message being retained. Um, and SMS is a great way to do that. Now, interestingly, we did have uh, six people say they are using this one. So 32% of people are using SMS. That doesn't surprise me. Um, I'm not, but I'm open to it. And we were talking about this, this webinar, and I thought if I was using SMS or if I had collected permission and phone numbers, I could have sent an SMS message right before the <laughs> webinar started mm -hmm. reminding people. Now we had great attendance today. I was really pleased with the number of people who turned out. So thanks again for that. Um, but sometimes with webinars, you don't get that. And so a last minute nudge as their phone buzzes, the webinar starting in two minutes, like that might be exactly what it takes to, to up your percentages. And obviously, if you wanna tie that back to making money, right? Um, you know, the more eyeballs you get on your content or your call to action, uh, the higher, you know, whatever rate you're converting at, the more people will end up in the bucket that has converted. And so, one quick note, that can be part of an automated webinar as well. It does not have to mean you're there two minutes before texting it in like, hey, do this thing. Oh, for sure. It can for actually sure. be part of a system. Yeah. If we did the same webinar every month, like it's, everything's automated. Everything can be automated almost. Oh, snap. I like this. Hammer said it's great for billing issues. Uh, he's Ooh. able to recover Ooh. credit cards or, or get more people to update Smart. when. Yeah. Mark said automating a text to members who, who opted out. Yeah, so like if you have paying subscribers who unsubscribe, you could automate a text to them to try to figure out, well, why? And maybe it was an accident, more than likely it was. I've seen people forward an email to someone else and if that person clicks unsubscribe, it unsubscribes the recipient. So there may be scenarios like that where people um, want your messaging and texting them might be a way to, to recover some of that otherwise lost communication. Guys. Here is the hidden agenda, right? Have you ever felt like webinars were a thinly veiled promotion and there was nothing of substance? Hopefully you did not feel that way today, but here's our angle. Here's where Brian and Greg, you know, uh, get something out of this. If you are not a plus this user, you probably should be. It's a powerful tool and I would love it if you used my affiliate link to sign up for plus this. That's on this page as well. If you are a plus this user or are becoming a plus this user, Brian would love to offer you a 20 minute consultation where you can ask whatever you like. If there's one of these features you want to dig into more, right? You can sign up for a consultation with him. Or if you're just like, hey, I have this other scenario. Is there a feature that solves it? Brian is world class at this and he offers consulting as a service. Now his rates are probably a $1,000 an hour. I have no idea what he charges, but he's giving you 20 minutes to just have a chat. Obviously, you can't rebuild your whole business in that time, but if things work and you enjoy the, the rapport you have with Brian and you want to hire him, I don't know what type of bandwidth he has, but he does offer consulting as a service. So that's it. Now, the reason I feel comfortable sharing that this is our agenda is because it's up to you. We want, we hope this webinar was extremely valuable, but that's why we did this is we also have these two offers and if either of them benefit you, well, we'd love to help connect you with those. So um, Brian, do we have any questions uh, that have been typed in already that we need to spend a little bit of time on? Or I, should I switch to bonus features I first? I think we're actually good. I've answered, we've answered most of the questions here. Uh, if people have not, ah. uh, okay, we have a question from Rob. Uh, yes. Yes. The answer is yes. Rob's question yeah. is, can you use it to pass info from one form to another? <laughs> right. My experience has been that the plus this modern forms, it, it's just Infusionsoft forms, but they look good. Otherwise they behave identically. And so, yeah, you can string them together. Uh, you uh, Plus this also lets you use them self-hosted. So if you wanna, like it, uh, if you just have web forms have a self-hosted link, uh, once you wrap it in plus this, that link looks a little different, but it should functionally behave exactly the same. Renee's answering for Jonathan. Yes, agency accounts, thank you. All right, Tara asked about page triggers. Yeah, she said, I assume they need to be logged in to track this. Um, yeah, so I use it in a membership area. So they are logged in. Um, and so it does give you embed code that is different for Memberium or Access Ally or iMember or Customer Hub. Um, and if they're logged in, it's a no brainer. It just merges in their ID. If I it is, if it's not behind a login, I think that they need to arrive there from an Infusionsoft delivered link. That's that what I was your gonna say. As well, Brian? I was gonna say the exact same thing, that it has to have probably content ID appended and maybe content ID and email address appended yeah. uh, to go and 
be happy. I'm I'm double checking right now. Uh, yeah, and that's that's the way that Infusionsoft's web page uh, automation goal works as well. Um, you can track certain pages, but if the person visiting that page, if Infusionsoft doesn't know who they are, it can't follow up with them. This would work similarly for Plus This. Hey, thank you, Hammer. He said great job. He's got a bounce, I'm sure. Um, yeah, guys, uh, the goal here is that you know we recognize Plus This is a valuable tool, but there's so many features in there. It's not realistic for you to. You probably don't need all of them, and it's not realistic for you to just comb through feature by feature and try to dream up scenarios where they might fit. And it can be a little difficult to do when it's abstract. And so our goal for this one was to show you, um, I was gonna say a handful, but it's really 10, two handfuls of features that hopefully um, are gonna increase the value you get out of Plus This every day, allow you to save more time, grow your sales. Um, yeah, the Plus This book is on, there's a link for it on that page, I believe. Is there? I didn't see one. There will be. There will there be. Will be a link Ignore for what that. I said. Oh, Ignore no, it's me. In the follow -up email. It's in the follow-up email. That's oh, oh that's okay. Yes. Yep. So open Ooh. the email. Yeah. The well, it hasn't it hasn't gone out yet. It will go out with the recording once I've got that live. So I apologize for that. The book and the recording will be sent out separately. Yeah. Uh, for the page triggers to function, you got to pass that along, Brian. I just was I just was copying from the plus this feature. So it's contact yes. and contact email have to be in the URL. Yeah. And the okay. Thank you. And uh, you're right. The plus this book is not on that page currently. Um, I will add it to that, but it is in the follow up email that will go out with the recording. All right. Um, did you know first and last name URL coding needs to pass uh, to infuse off landing page? Um, Mark, that's a good question. Um, is that a is that unique? Is that specific to plus this, or are you just wondering in general? Because uh, maybe some context would help. So separately. Yeah, so with the Infusionsoft landing pages, uh, he's asking about passing information through to the page. Uh, there's a URL param setting for each field. So when you add fields to the landing page, um, you can define you know, what you want that field to be called. And then when you set up the URL, you can use those uh, URL params that you define and do like question mark, uh, first equals, and then the merge field for first name ampersand, last equals, and the merge field for last name. Um, but Mark, if you wanna shoot me an email, I think I have some resources specifically on that that might be valuable for you. I'll be happy to share those. Uh, it's just greg at monkeypodmarketing.com. Although you probably know that because if you signed up for this webinar, <laughs> at, least, at least one email from me, but um, all right. So let's do this. I Here's a couple bonus features. These are all, really simple, but they're valuable. And I wanted, like, if you're like, hey, Greg, I'm already using all 10 of those things you talked about, um, which I don't think anyone is, here's a couple extras that I use that just are, are no brainers to add. So you may have seen that the emails that went out ahead of this webinar had add to calendar links where you could click and add the um, event to your calendar. The reason we do that is to um, help encourage people to attend. But even if you're not hosting webinars, this would also really work for appointments or consultations or demos. Uh, and plus this allows you to create add to calendar links, both for iCal, um, for Google and for Outlook. So you set up the event, you can use merge fields in it, you can base it off of you know a custom field, a custom date field, and then you can use those links in your emails. And when people click them, it adds it to their calendar. Uh, I, I really love this feature uh, because there, I haven't found a simple way to generate those add to calendar links. And um, plus this does it. So if you do appointments of any kind, this is a great way to make sure people are showing up for their appointments. And then um, let me this, add, and in case yeah. you didn't mention, you can merge information into those add to calendar links. So you can, uh, you can populate, so let's say a Zoom link into Infusionsoft and then use that merge mm -hmm. that into your plus this add to calendar link. So the email that goes out for an automated webinar, let's say, has an appropriate different Zoom link for each one or whatever you want to do. So you can, yeah. get, you can get really fancy with- I did that for this webinar. Is I included their their unique Demio join link in the body of the calendar event, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's swank. Hey, Take care, Vanessa, Vanessa got, it. got a bounce. Thank you, Vanessa, thanks for being here. Uh, the second bonus feature here is math which, um, you know, as you know, Infusionsoft doesn't allow you to compare fields easily. So what plus this math does is it allows you to add, increment, decrement, 
decrement. That's a new word. Definitely a uh, word. Decrement. Uh, multiply, subtract, average, uh, combine fields. Brian, how do you use the math feature? I like it to uh, increment a custom field when people do a thing. Like I might want to say, everyone, some every time someone gets a click tag, go and run the math feature to add one to a custom field yes. and give me a custom field that says how many times did a person click in the last 30 days or 90 days, depending on the client and how often people are clicking. Uh, Ooh, you I can, like that. It's, that, so that's a really basic use case, complicated use case you can create. Can I get nerdy, like a little bit nerdy here towards, because you know, past the hour. We're in bonus time, man. Bonus Go time. Nuts. So uh, people always want to know coefficient of customer health, which is to say a, a unique metric, one number that will tell you who's healthy, who's not healthy in your membership site. You can add into things like this, like how many days since their last login, how many days since their last course completion, how many clicks and emails in the last 30 days, all those kind of things. You can use math and multiply all those together to create a single variable coefficient of customer health or member health. And then you can rank order your people by who's healthiest and who's the least healthy. And that can help you figure out who to go target, who's most likely to churn out of your, of your membership site. Dude, that's not just a little nerdy. That's real nerdy and I'm into it. Um, <laughs> here's another scenario. So, oh, Mark uses it for tracking course signups. Uh, Peter's gotta go later, Peter. Um, here's another scenario I set up with a, a friend of mine, uh, PJ and Susie of her business in Australia. Um, they offer mentoring, right? So the customer pays each month and then they are assigned a mentor and they get a mentoring session each month, right? So, but sometimes people, you know, can't schedule and so they want to do their, their session the next month or whatever. So we created a whole number field. The goal is for that field to always be zero, right? And so each time they pay, it adds one to that field. And each time the mentor uh, records that they had a session, it removes one from that field. So what it does is it tells you if that mentoring gets out of alignment. If they've paid two in advance and are, haven't had a session, that number is going to be two or more, and that's not okay. Um, or if they've had too many sessions and they're not and their payments haven't processed, it's going to be a negative two, right? So the goal is always for that to be zero. Um, but they set up saved searches. So if the number is above two or below negative two, they're immediately notified and they have those searches emailed to them so they can reconcile it, right? So plus this is doing the hard work of tracking uh, by adding to or removing to this custom field that tracks their um, their mentoring engagement. Okay, um, Rob tuned in late after a meeting. Uh, yeah, no worries, Rob, glad you're here, buddy. Uh, the next one is format text fields. Uh, I use this to proper case people's names. If you have ever had customers sign up in all caps or in all lowercase, when you merge their name into a email, it merges in all capital letters or all lowercase letters and it can look a little goofy, right? So I use the plus this format text fields feature so that everybody who comes in, their name is capital letter and then all lowercase. And I do that for first and last name and company name. Okay. So this is a great feature to just standardize the formatting for those fields. I'm sure you could do the same thing for address fields or for any other fields that need to be merged into emails if you wanna make sure that they are um, the right case. A quick note on format text fields is that there are some last names, uh, especially day oh, sure. space sure. law space a name for Latin yeah. names or van space der space the last name for Dutch names or Connor's names. So be yeah. cool because you might be taking someone's like Oscar de yeah. la Renta, and you might accidentally be making that. And you also got to figure out is Van Der a middle name or a last name? And yeah. if you're dealing with a lot of people, this is a problem. If you're dealing with a small number of people, have this tool running constantly and then give yourself a ping to once a month, glance through all the people it's dealt with and say, are there any middle names that are actually part of a last name? That's a great point. It's yeah. rare, uh, but I've, I've, if you don't do it, if someone types in accurately Van space, Der space, yeah. Veen, and yeah. then you say, hey, Bob Veen, they're like, my name's Bob Vanderveen. Yeah, What's right, right. You? I even put I, it in right. Yep. So the I guess the bulk of scenarios, it'll probably be fine. Yeah. But that's a good caveat to, to keep an eye out for. Um, like any feature, there are going to be fringe case scenarios you should be aware of. Um, B's got to take off. B, I think it's B. Tell me if I'm mispronouncing it. Congratulations on your T-shirt. Um, I haven't checked my inbox, but let me know how to get it to you. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. And uh, Scott had a question. Can you use math to take an amount from two different IS custom fields, add, set, subtract, or multiply, and then put the result in a third IS custom field? Scott, bro, you can. 
Um, yeah, you can store the value back to one of the original fields or put it in a third field. So uh, I'm not sure what your plan is for how you, you'll use that, but you absolutely can. Um, Brian, you want to talk about easy opt out? Yeah. So the problem is that I was looking at cleaning up my database before emailing some people about something. And I saw I have some people who have, they haven't engaged in over 12 months and that they're even sitting in my database as marketable means I might email them. And that, you know, the 12 months and beyond, like six months and beyond is the, maybe this is a bad idea. 12 months and beyond is the you're in spam trap. You're like in the danger zone of spam traps and deliverability suckage. So I went in there and manually opted them all out. But with the easy opt out feature, you can say if someone gets to X number of months since last engagement, you can then go say, bye. And then you can also tag them. So you can say, this person was just opted out. You should go look at them. But you can yep. also further in the campaign, you can say, when they get to 12 months, if they are a customer, then go create a case in whatever your case management customer service thing is to follow up with them. If they're not a customer or not a member, opt them out. So you can have various gradations and have an intelligent system for making sure you're not saying, peace out to someone who's actually a customer. And maybe they log in all the time. They just haven't opened an email in 12 months. Yeah, man. Um, I'm I'm learning more and more that uh, it's t like it's personal, right? I'm a small business owner, and I work hard to build my audience, and so it is not fun to stop emailing people who I feel like I can help. But the the reality is, if they're if they haven't engaged with your content by emailing them, you could be hurting your chances at reaching the people who are engaging. And like, that's just how it works, man. And engagement is only becoming more important. So there is a point of diminishing return where you may need to say, if nine months or whatever it is have gone by, opt this person out. Uh, and and like, I know I, my, I'm of the mindset that like, maybe they'll come back, maybe a year later, they're gonna like re-engage, um, but not at the cost of struggling to get things to people who are more recent and fresher on my list. So let's the opt out is a great way to prevent the unnecessary baggage from hurting your overall deliverability. And let's get a bit ninja here. You can combine that with the Facebook custom audiences yeah. to say, as soon as I have someone out, they get added to a Facebook thing. That's only for my opt outs for my, my administratively opt outed people. So they right. can see an ad saying, Hey there, we miss you. At the same time, if you have a, their SMS, you can also have a different function that says, send them a text message saying, hey, Greg, just wanted to let you know, I hadn't seen you open an email in a while, so I stopped sending you more emails. I wanna know I still care about you. If I can ever help you out with anything, text me back. I'd love to hear what's going on in your world. Peace. Super yeah. respectful, single text message, making sure you're sending it only to people you actually have permission to text message, right? But you can set up all that so it's totally automatic. I love it. Um, Ashley had to bounce. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, Pierre is taken off. He said uh, he, he needs to leave, which is his easy opt out. Uh, thank you. And Yarek pointed out it's quality over quantity, man. That's yeah. what I was struggling to say is like the quality of your list. Obviously, the engagement and relationship you have with them mat matters much more than the quantity of individuals on your list. So well, I was thinking in the other direction that the quality of content you put out matters more than the quantity that how customized is it to you? How relevant is it to you? Like that matters more than the quantity of content you're pushing at somebody. Um, it's true both I mean, ways. Yeah, I was gonna say, we're, we're probably both right. Um, Yarek, you're although, so smart. Although Yarek, feel free to back me up if you want. Nobody <laughs> is not a um, guys, I think that's it. I know we're, we're over time, we're at about 90 minutes here and we've still got 30 of you kicking it with us. So thank you guys very much for that. Um, I'm. This is awesome. Plus, this is great. This was, I feel confidently saying this is uh, perhaps the best webinar I've ever done. Um, and Brian, I want to give a lot of credit to you. So thank you very much for um, for being here, for sharing your wisdom and expertise. And I'll just say it, for anyone uh, who's on the fence, book a slot with Brian. Uh, he's a powerhouse and you won't regret spending 20 minutes. Even if you don't talk about plus this, he's a fascinating individual. So take advantage of that consultation he offered. Um, yeah, Andre, I'm hoping to have a recording for you here shortly. So thank you for circling back. Um, Mark Emmett, uh, thanks for joining. Uh, Jonathan, thanks. This was great. Let's do it again sometime. My, um, I'm down. Yeah, I'm down. Let's do it again. My response to what Greg said is that the very best place to ask great questions about Plus This, besides the Plus This Facebook group, is the Monkey Pod Grow Facebook group, where I'm one of the paying members, along with 200 plus of your closest friends, or who will shortly be your closest friends. Because you can go there and you can say, I want to do this thing. Can I do it? You can tag me, you can tag Greg, and then a bunch of people you don't know will go give you really good ideas. And we'll, we'll respond too. 
but the the quantity of good yeah. feedback you can get is always amazing. Uh, and we've it, got I, a handful of Monkey Pod members on yeah, here today. You saw, um, you saw earlier on the um, on the slide here. It's like thirty five bucks a month. So it's the cost of like a pizza or two, depending on the quality of pizza you prefer to eat. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you're a distributions off user and the membership is interesting to you, um, I'd love to to tell you about it or or, or welcome you into our community. Okay, I'm call really me proud of twenty minutes, for- and I'll just tell you how cool it is for twenty minutes straight. Legit, All right, totally good. Use that is it, guys. Um, thanks for hanging out with us today. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your uh, your questions. And if there's anything Brian and I can do to help set you up for success, to to grow your business and multiply the audience that you serve, please let us know. Peace.